I'm Dan O'Neill, a biologist and filmmaker, and I'm on a mission to find out what it takes to save an endangered species. <laughs> Join me on an expedition to the mountains of Kyrgyzstan as I learn firsthand how this country has brought snow leopards back from the brink. This is tough work. Look how clean that is. I think there's nothing. In this last leg of our journey, we venture deep into the heart of the remote and rugged Sarichat Reserve. Yeah. To plant more camera traps and pinning all our hopes on spotting a snow leopard. It's like a ghost of the mountains. I think it's a phantom who's there, but you never see it. Stop is... I can't, I can't roll my eyes. Oh, so you're never going to stop. Yeah, that's it. Was, so, two, two. Two is go. Uh, this is Aliska, my horse. I'm just packing her up, because we are going off in that direction now um, for about four hours to set some more camera traps. Uh, some rangers have gone over there, um, some other guys have gone way, way off in that direction, and we're, yeah, tossed over there. Up we go! Choo. Choo, choo, choo. It's funny because um, if Sultan doesn't hold on to um, this girl here, apparently she will just bolt as far as the eye can see into the distance. Our route takes us in some pretty rough terrain. Hey, shas. We're relying on these semi-wild horses to do it. Hardly reassuring when the nearest hospital is two days' drive away. <laughs> yeah, good. Weather's changed. We've got our first snow in the mountains. Up there, it looks like a prime snow leopard cave, and I bet there's like 40 50 snow leopards in there. That's when they go for tea. That is probably the most beautiful view I've ever seen in my life. Stunning, isn't it? the Argali, the Ibex, to come up into their lair, but yeah. When I catch up with Kuban, he tells me something that brings me back down to earth. This valley is long, but it goes to hunting concession. In 2010, we apprehended one poacher here, right here. And he pretended that he was chasing wolf, but, but you wouldn't chase wolf so long, you know? And then we confiscated his gun. So again, people from this hunting concession brought uh, Canadian hunters, three hunters. And then they shot one Argali there, and then two Ibex mm. in the reserve. It's just really sad. This feels like one of those last truly remote places, and that even here is still at risk. Imagine someone will come and say, OK, if you let me hunt here, I will give you $2,000. And these guys sell it as $100. And, you know, yeah. they will maybe let them do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is a problem when it comes to conserving highly prized species the world over. But I'm reminded that for these rangers, protecting snow leopards supports their whole community who make and sell crafts which are sold around the world but only if they protect the snow leopards. After another broken night of sleep, we set off, climbing higher still in minus 15 degrees. Kuban says he prefers coming here in winter, despite the cold, and there, another one there. As there are more opportunities of seeing wild snow leopards. They were here, but I didn't see. But see, huge one. 
a huge yeah. one. Wow. It's huge. See? You can see them really clearly. Yeah. Look, there we go. There's the pad. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Wow. Snow leopard bug marks. Three snow Oh, when it's snow it. This one is a scrape marking. And then there is another scrape here. Yeah. Right there. That's amazing. Not even 24 hours ago. There. Up here. Right below us. And three snow leopards. Literally 24 hours ago. Probably a mother and two older cubs because the prints are so big. They were right here. And there was one, two, three cats. They walked down here. God knows where they've gone. Maybe they've gone back up in the valley. Maybe we'll see them now. With proof that we're in the right area, the team set camera traps in the hope that in six months time, they'll come back and find evidence of snow leopards. Maybe even a mother and her cubs. But it's not foolproof. So last year, bear came and then uh, it moved our camera, but there was another camera tip, and that bear broke that camera. By setting multiple traps, the team covers their bases. So when we set up our camera tip, we check that camera tip, that one, and it had very nice images. Yeah. Yeah. In all, 40 camera traps are placed across the reserve, covering some 1,400 square kilometers. And the videos reveal an array of life hard to imagine in these stark and inhospitable mountains. Argali, wolves, ibex, bears, hares, marmots, and chuffs. With the weather closing in, we press on deeper into the reserve to set the last few traps. You can see it, see? The huge one. Yeah, that is. You didn't. And then also here, see? Maybe from last night. Very fresh, very fresh. Ooh. Now that is a strong smell. But look, dude, there's a camera trap right there. <laughs> Should we check? We can oh. check. It's not working. Maybe it's working. This camera recorded a family of three snow leopards scent marking at this very spot earlier in the year. Really cold. But when we check, there's nothing. Just tiny movements triggering the camera. I'm gonna just cut. Is it working? No. Yeah. no? We set the trap in a new position near the spray marks, which the team will get in a few months' time. Ah, it's working. It's working. Snow leopards have been here. But it's getting very snowy now. It's harder to see at the top of the ridges. Harder to see. But I don't know. There's something in the air. I feel lucky today. Let's go. Years of practice and wildlife tracking skills guide Kuban into a promising spot. And then, something catches Kuban's eye. I think it is. If it's, if it's moving? That's not rock. It's moving. Record it. Okay. <laughs> it's moving. Record it. Record it. It needs to move away, maybe. Holy s! It is a snow leopard! Oh my god! It is! I found it without binoculars, see? It is! Oh my god, dude, it's just right there! Oh my god, it's moving, I can't believe it! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, you can so close you can see it without the scope. Oh my god. Wait, look, is it a rock? Is it a rock? God. I need to look again. 
Maybe there are two. Because the left one is also maybe smaller, you know? It's not moving, but there is something on the left. Is, is, it, is that two? Is it just one? Maybe there are two. There's absolutely no denying now. He's just sat up, he's looking right at us, he's moving his head around. That is a cat. That is a very big snowy cat. Oh my god! I didn't think we were going to see it, honestly. Oh, I can't believe it. The feeling of... It's like a mixture between utter, unadulterated happiness and like the biggest sense of relief you can possibly imagine. <sighs> We're looking at a snow leopard. Oh my God, look at it. 100%. Yeah, it's an absolute snow leopard. See? That's the fix See? of a See? snow leopard. See? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What number snow leopard is this for you? Number four, I'm a fourth. That's the fourth snow leopard yeah. you've ever seen. How yeah. long have you been working here? Uh, 50, 60 times. I, I, I don't count now, you know? <laughs> oh my God. Look, it's gone. See, now it's gone, you know? We came in time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right time, right place. <laughs> Right place, right time. Just can't believe it. Yeah, we found it, yeah. This is clearly an incredibly special place, Sari Chat. <laughs> and it makes total sense that this is probably the place with the highest density of snow leopards on the planet. We know that uh, the number of snow leopards has increased since we started working in this area. And I believe that we did something, you know, in this, you know. There are other organizations and then life has changed, the economy has changed, but I know that we also did something here, you know. I'm, I can say that I'm proud of this. It's hard to think about it, you know, that, that someone will come here and damage this place, you know. We should keep it. We don't, we don't have these kind of places in the world. Yeah, we should keep it. In a situation where I thought maybe I'd be coming here and we kind of follow a sad, declining story of an animal that's moving its way towards extinction. It's not even a glimmer, but such a strong feeling of hope that because these people are working together in those four pillars that Costa talks about, the community-based conservation, the research, policy and education, all working together, that's how you keep an animal like this alive. That's how you keep snow leopards living in these mountain habitats. And that's how you get things like seeing two snow leopards in one day. And it gets me excited for the future, that models like this might work for not just these animals, but for countless other endangered species. Mm -hmm.